Every year, ocean researchers explore the Labrador Sea and other parts of the north on board the Coast Guard ship Amundsen. On its last voyage, the land and sea team was on board to watch the scientists at work. Research in the ocean is costly, and because of the unpredictability of the environment, the information takes a long time to gather. As Land and Sea host Jane Aidy explains, that's something researchers want more people to understand. The deck of the Coast Guard ship Amundsen is covered in some pretty pricey equipment. There's the machinery that deploys nets and various other sampling devices used by researchers. And then there are the research tools themselves. There are devices that collect sediments and tiny plankton that fall in the water column. Specialized hydrophones that record sounds from marine mammals like songs from whales. This piece measures the salinity or saltiness of the water and receives signals from tagged fish that might swim by. All these pieces sit vertically on a mooring line out in the ocean for a year collecting data. Sean Meredith is a mooring specialist with Amundsen Science. The cost of those instruments would be about $290,000. But you know, if you're asking an instrument to scan the water column 400 meters above itself all year, every 30 minutes, uh, it's pretty demanding and it, not a lot of companies build these devices, so they do have a little bit of the market, but if you want that data, you gotta, you gotta pay those dollars. Mm -hmm. so, you know, quickly, when instruments cost between fifty and say eighty thousand dollars each, the batteries are between two and three thousand usually, and it starts to all add up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sean Meredith says good ocean research takes patience and persistence. I don't think the average uh, Canadian understands the amount of work that's needed, the amount of money that's needed, the amount of organization, logistics just to understand how warm the water is or to understand how the current, you know, that one little picture that you have of how the current moves. It came from years and years and years of research and data and logistics and people all working together, um, sometimes in rough conditions. Meredith says he and many of the other researchers on board would love to be on the Amundsen more often than once a year, particularly now as climate change requires immediate attention. But Coast Guard vessels like Amundsen aren't dedicated research vessels. They serve multiple purposes, like icebreaking and search and rescue. Many researchers on board say a dedicated science fleet would accelerate learning. Dave Cote is the chief scientist for this year's mission. He says ocean researchers want more opportunities to get out on the water. For the community in general, access to more vessels, not just specifically Coast Guard vessels, but we're seeing increasingly some private sector vessels are, are, are changing over their boats so that they can do science activities in addition to fishing activities. So really we just need opportunities to get on boats and, and do the work. For now, Sean Meredith and the others do what they can in the time they're given at sea, trying to understand and document the changes in this environment and how those changes impact us all. For Here and Now, I'm Jane Aidy with Land and Sea.